that area. I've been sharing on the other one, so I just have to share. Um, I just have to put the post the videos on here and that'll be fine. Which one is it? Is it this one? Okay, let's go. Oh, we're live. Oh, you can see my... <laughs> my meal. There's all kinds of different things there. And all kinds of different flavors. And I said I wasn't going to eat anything big, but I changed my mind. Let's go. I think this one. I think the 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 wick is like. Ah! See, that's why. That's that's what I thought. The devil is a liar. Did you see how the wind started to blow when I started to light it? Barukata Adonai. Hold on. It has to melt. Wow. Burukata Adonai and the Hino Melekaulam. Ashe Krishanu, Asimanu. They are Lignar Shelsuka. Father, let your precious blood, Jesus, let it cover this place. Let it keep it and cover this place. We sanctify to you, Father. Even now, as you commanded us to dwell in the Sukkah, just like you dwell in us, but to remember exactly what Israel went through, even in their 40 years in the wilderness, our journey on this earth is much like that. It's a journey where we have to just trust you and we have to rely on you for patience and oh, everything else. You're an amazing God. And a loving father, you feel not. Oh, and I got like, when I made the sukkah, I got like this little white stone that shaped like a heart. You know when he says he'll write our names like on, uh, um, on, on a, on uh, a white stone? Okay, so how are you guys going to see me? I don't know. I can just make something here. Like so. Okay. Is that good? Is that better? No. And you have to watch the angles that that camera is going. Okay, that's good. Yes? Nay? Probably not. Maybe I could use my hair like an extra jacket, like I always do. Yes? Okay, we're hidden. Good, so, okay. So we're just gonna... <laughs> Yay! Hallelujah! Glory to God! Can you see anything? No? No, I think it's this way. I don't want to face that way. I have to face this way. You don't need to see me anyhow. You just need to hear me, okay? So, today the word was, um, everything in the dark will come to light. And we've been seeing a lot of stuff coming to light, a lot of things that, a lot, a lot of things, a lot of things, okay. There's going to be a shift of um, Hollywood people, that there is already a Hollywood shift, um, a shift of people in Hollywood that are choosing God and are choosing, um, they're choosing Jesus because they're getting smart. 
So don't mind the music at the background because that is just the respect that we have in this place. When you're stupid, you're just stupid, you know? Don't worry, God will deal with them in time. As well as that car's gonna get punctured. All the tires. Why? Because I had to pass through the bush to get here. Look. I don't know who car that is. I don't know if that had drugs in it. Whoever parked it there didn't even ask for permission. Which is why Carl said, lock the gates. And I told him, I said, when Jack comes, I don't want to go outside and, um, you know, open or if anybody comes, if mom comes, I have to go there or whatever. And I'm like, nope. But that doesn't mean advantage me. So, you really kind of ticked me off when I was home. It didn't happen. But as soon as I left, which people around are going to look and see, well, oh, look, she just went out with somebody opened and parked in. Which is not good. So, it just kind of upset me a lot. I'm trying not to get upset, but, you know, I am. So what did he say about everything in the dark coming to light? Everything. For example, the big controversy with um, all the big stars that were boasting about millions and billions and all the best my ministry for it. Me boy, my mind and my spirit to glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. So everything that they did in the dark to get rich it's coming out. Their sexual orgies, their murders, their drugging. They didn't want to say, but you know. They didn't want to say what Jamie Fox uh, almost died from, but he was the one who. Um, He was the one who was recording stuff. So they tried to silence him. Things that people have been doing where they would go and sit in a cemetery or um, they have this thing called grave soaking where they go in a cemetery and they go to a dead person's grave who's been anointed and they roll around in the dirt <laughs> hoping to get some of the anointing. I tell you, they don't want God, but they want the power. They don't want Jesus as God, but they want him as Savior. It's sad. So all the satanic things, child sacrifices, human sacrifices, all the satanic things that people have been doing quietly and everybody's like, oh, they're so this and they're so that. God is bringing everything out in the open. Abu Jesus says, nope. Is there anything hidden from him? Nope. So remember he said he made the heart, he made the mind. Not just that his eyes are going to and fro in the earth. Not just that he's, he's in the dark and in the light. He's everywhere. The Bible says if I make my bed in hell, he's there. If I ascend to heaven, he's there. There's nowhere and nothing that he doesn't see. So when the intention is ill in the heart, he already knows because he made it. 
When the attention is ill in the mind or the thoughts, he knows, he made it. There's nothing that you could hide from him. Everything in the dark is coming to light. Mm -hmm. He's called the Elroy for a reason. It means the God who sees everything. Everything. All our sins, all our thoughts, all our intents, all our goodness, our waking up, our lying down, our walking out, our coming in. There is nothing that he does not know. We should be scared of that because now is time, reaping time. What you sow is what you're going to reap. Corruption unto corruption. If you sow love, you're going to give out love. That kind of thing. Now is harvest time. The world is quaking that he's coming back. And they're doing their best to keep people distracted so that they don't focus on it. They don't panic and they don't turn to him. But it ain't working very well because Hollywood is falling apart. See this guy, um, Bebo as well, he came out and he said how he was abused by um, Puff Daddy as a kid. And all the big stars and the renowned ones that you've listened, I'm sure you've heard some of their music and stuff. It is sexually abused. And because that's the one with the contract, and this is this, and that is that. Man in man. Disgusting. Papa says it's shameful. He says it's shameful to speak of what is done in the dark by those who are against him. It's shameful. The Bible says at the judgment, every single deed will be uncovered. Every single word will be uncovered. Every single one. I should have brought a lampshade already. You should have seen the balancing act I did with this glass. My plate was on top of it while I was closing the door. But you see, there comes a time in someone's life, in a soul's life, where you have to admit that there's been a way that's stupid and there's been a way that's smart. There's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is what? Destruction. So every soul inside, every single one is crying for some kind of salvation. And there's this saying that's very, very smart. It's very, very wise. It says, when a man does not know his purpose, he tries to drown his conscience with pleasure. Ooh. Now that's a big statement. When a man doesn't know his purpose, he tries to drown his conscience with pleasure. That should tick off some people. Sweet and sour and savory and buttery and yumminess going on here. Mm -hmm. mm.
So, the Bible says, at the judgment seat, every single soul will stand. And he makes it, he makes it specific. At the judgment seat of Christ, every soul will, will actually kneel. Because every knee will bow and every tongue will confess him. Whether you like him or not, it doesn't matter at that point. It doesn't matter if you choose him or not. It matters if you lived in him. Because whatever is stored up is stored up. And at that point, you're just like a, a broken record that's just stored up there for judgment. Which is sad. Um... Some hard times are coming, but there's also a restoration coming. Uh, it's going to be, remember Israel, USA is reflecting Israel, all right? That's why USA is smack in the middle of Jerusalem. J-E-R-U-S-A-L-E-M. That is not by coincidence. I mean, it takes wisdom to recognize it, but, you know, when you point it out, you can't unsee it. Abba showed me that, and he said, um, he said, Jerusalem, USA is reflecting Jerusalem. Whatever's happening in Israel will happen in the USA. And that is something very scary because what happened last year on the Feast of Tabernacles, when it happened on the Sabbath, was not nice. It was horrible. And with all these people that the USA is letting in, anything can happen. You gotta pray for discernment. You gotta pray to be in the right places at the right time. One moment is all it takes. For those who aren't Sabbath keepers, for those whom the Lord has not convicted of being uh, Sabbath keepers, I would still advise you, especially in these times, to try your hardest, try your darnest to not go out on Friday nights and be at pubs and clubs and Stuff like that you're supposed to be home with her. Or Saturday nights, because people, that's why Abba said, um, how did he say it again? Do not be in a rush for Sabbath to be over. Don't be in a rush. You know, don't anticipate, okay, Sabbath's finished, so we can just go back to our old, nah, don't do that. Stay in the spirit. Remember, Sabbath is more like a reset for the week. Oh. We're in India and Arabia, by the way. So from time to time, you're going to hear a lot of that. People watch too many Indian movies. You know Bollywood? That's where lives are this way. Worshipping idols. Um... Was it Daniel this today? Kel, Kel, Kelin, Josephic, something like that. He said, um, when it floods, they pick up their idols and you run with it. And I'm like, huh? That was funny. That was really funny because it's how he said it. 
He's like, when it floods, they have to pick up their idols and run with it because they're going to be under the water and they're going to be ruined. But he's a really anointed preacher, man. And when he spoke, he spoke with such a conviction. He said that men are supposed to lead the home, but men who are uh, in Christ, men who are in God, men who have a kind of a sense of discipline, a sense of... Uh, The Holy Ghost. Because whatever the anointing is supposed to lead down. But that's not the way the world is. The world's messed up. Hmm. So, obviously, is that everything in the dark will come to light. Everything. That's big corporations, small lives. Every soul is crying inside. The spirit inside of the body is screaming because eternity is next. We could die today, tomorrow. We could not wake up in the morning, and that'll be the end of it. It doesn't have to be an accident. It doesn't have to be a tornado or an earthquake or something like that. He could just say, okay, the time's up. And that's it. So the Bible says, at the judgment seat of Christ, every book shall be opened. The book of the living, the book of the dead, the book of everything. Every single thing. And... You know, it's it's concerning when Abba says that his thoughts towards us are thou are endless. But he he knows all the stars of the sky. He knows every hair on our head. Uh, what does that leave for him not knowing? Mm hmm. Is that a piece of apple? Mm hmm Just what I needed. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because the ants wants to locate me. So, he makes that very clear and he says, the stars, you see billions of it, but he knows each one by name. And us, he knows every hair in our heads. What does he not know? There's nothing that he doesn't know. So at the judgment seat of Christ, our oh Jesus is going to be like, he is the king of glory. He is God. So he's going to be like, he's going to put away the chances now and he's going to open the books. Right now, the books are being written. I don't know if anybody remembered, it was a couple of years ago, but the angel stood with a scroll or a book in his hand and he was measuring, um, he was measuring the city. I actually had a picture of that where he was perched on a, no, he wasn't sitting, he was standing. And he had like this thing in his hand and he was measuring the city. All of that is going to be in the book. Um, also, the Bible says that the saints and the angels, this, don't you know that the saints shall judge this world and the angels? Hmm. What makes us saints? And before you say the blood of Jesus, because we're all imperfect, even if we were holy from the day we were born to the day that we die, 
We're imperfect. Yes? So saints and angels, saints, saints, it says that we're not even going to be given in marriage at the resurrection. We're going to be like the angels. The angels are ministering spirits sent unto the heirs of salvation. Which is why they like to show up a lot when when we stand in unison, that's a word that I've been using a lot, in unison with them, because they love to love on God, they love to love on Jesus. So that's why they show up, and especially at the magnification of the blood, they love it, because they're there for Him, they're there to serve Him, and they're there to serve us, the ears. You know how sleepy I was? I'm not even sleepy anymore. I'm not even sleepy anymore. I'm like wide awake. So here's here's the patience of the who. Here's the patience of the who. Who are we having patience with? Here's the patience of the who. Of the saints. Who are the saints? Here are they that keep the commandments of God. One. And hold fast to the testimony. Of Jesus. So. Okay. So. Here's the patience of they who keep the commandments. So you got a uh, obedient heart or a heart unto obedience. And here are they that cling to the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Yes? So, so we got, so we got commandments and we got spirit. And he's both. He's the living word and he's spirit. So when we are in sync with him, or we give our best to be in sync with him, we, we're in his will. He loves that. He loves when we take one step forward and he takes, he takes 10 towards us. He knows. He understands. That's why the Bible says he's patient with us. He, if we're in the dark, he understands that it's harder than if we're in the light. He's patient. He's kind. He's gentle, he's understanding, he's love, he's perfect. He's alive, he's not dead. Which which is why, you know, you could talk to him every day and he answers. But he also knows what we can handle and he knows what will change our character. He knows what will change our mind. He knows what will take us from him. when he wants something for himself, when he's jealous for someone, oh, he's jealous for someone, you better believe that he's jealous for someone. If I put anything in front of him, and I love that thing, it can be an animal, it can be a person, it could be a job, it could be a business, it could be a pet, whatever. If I put anything in front of him first, he'll take it away. It's what he's done in my life. It could be anything that he knows will corrupt my dedication or my seeking him and putting him for, he will move it. He will move it. 
which is why I always have to do everything, every single thing he, that is of him has to go first. When they look and they say, oh, she's unmarried, the Bible says, she who is unmarried care for the things of God. Hmm? And she who is she who is unmarried care for the things of God. She who is unmarried care for the things of her husband. She who is married care for the things of her husband. She who is unmarried care for the things of God. He who is married care for the things of God. He who is married care for the things of his, his spouse. And there's a jealousy, a godly jealousy that he wants where we're not seeking about, okay, for instance, if I go to the city to preach, right? And let's say I have a husband home, right? And he's like, where are you? Do you know what time it is? What are you doing out there? Who are you with? La, 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 la. And he's, he's like that, but you're healing people, you're preaching to people. He's not mindful of the things of God. With that, you've got freedom and freedom to do the things of God. It's not like freedom to just go, you know, okay, we're just going to lie, we're just going to hang, we're going to eat our guts full. No, it's about him. And he's jealous for that. The Bible says that the same spirit that he caused to dwell in us yearns with envy. He is envious of us in anything we place before him. So at the judgment, which is why he's called our first love. He is our first love. He has to be our first love. Everything else can come after. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. Not seek ye a hundredth the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. Not see ye fiftieth or second or third the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness and all other things um, added on to you first. No, you're rewriting your Bible. So, when people talk in the way of Apostle Paul, and I, I quite understand because he said some are made Enoch's, some are born Enoch's, and some become Enoch's for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Um, in the book of Luke, in the book of Luke 20, I think 35, it tells us something questionable. And I haven't gotten a straight answer from anybody yet about it because people are really avoiding it. It says those who are considered worthy to attain the resurrection, I don't have a Bible in front of me, I'm just saying as he's saying, um, they're neither married or given in marriage. Those who are considered worthy, that's Luke 20, 35. Why is that? Why is that? Why do you think that would be? Because they're about the Lord. 99% of life is God. The 1% is self. Because we're in a physical body. It reminds us that we are not God. So Luke 20, 35. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see. Mm. 
Look, 2035. Mm-hmm. And it says, but those who are considered worthy of taking part in the age to come and in the resurrection from the dead will neither marry or be given in marriage. What now? Hmm. Somebody explain that to me. I would love for you to explain that to me. Because what people have been doing in the body of Christ is just following others. They watch others and they say, oh, they've got a husband. Oh, they've got a wife. In the life circumstances and compromise, that's where that comes in. Give me a second here. I'm mixing up my, my connection. I don't know why I put chocolate in there, but oh well. Just going to keep me awake. Mm hmm Yum. So, explain that to me. And I want a married person to explain that to me. Explain Luke 20, 35 to me. Because it says, who are counted worthy to attain the resurrection. Hmm. From the dead. That tells me that people who are going to be raised from the dead, when they die, they die unmarried. Yes? Now, why would they be raised from the dead if they didn't choose Jesus when they died? Which means it has to be beheading, execution, persecution, something that says Something that says, I'm choosing God first. I'm choosing Jesus first. Right, so let me ask, let me ask this guy here what's good. Hi. Who told you to park in here? Kyle. Who told you to park in here? Kyle. Kyle? Kyle didn't tell me to... He, he gave you a key for the gate? Huh? huh? He gave you a key for the gate? Yeah. Really? Then you'll be paying my rent, right? Because Sachin don't even park in there. Because you waited till I went out to park in. You didn't park when I was here. So people think you're actually living here now. And I'll puncture the tires next time I see it. I will lock the gates. I'm seriously going to lock it now. And this fat Santa Claus laughing there because he knew exactly, he knows exactly what he did. I tell you, you can't have peace with people who don't have common sense. Because last, last night, yesterday, I had to say, hey, I consecrated this area for like 10 days. You think you could respect it? I literally have to say, hey, you think you could respect a consecrated area for like 10 days? No, the owner, the guy who's supposed to be bossy, he's so nice. But these two dilapidated workers, they, they just, they, Seriously, their brains don't work well.
I came, I came and I saw an old car in front of the gates. I'm like, okay, who's that? This person living here? Then when I came home, the car's inside. I'm like, who's this? Did somebody move in? No, that's not, that's not okay because when I go out and I come back in, hey, is me alone here? Don't, don't let me trip up. And where's your Red Sea come in? It's not going to be good. I don't think it's funny, you know. How old are you? Like 50 something? Okay. Because last year you did it. And if you do it this year again, I will come here and I will kick you out myself. Last year you sat in the sukkah and you smoked. And you had your fun in your party. I don't want to hear. You'll you just came to this island to mess up people's lives. Yeah, you do that. Yeah, you do that. You you bring down people's lives and you elevate yours. I don't feel I can't speak in Spanish. Because I can. He's standing there by the gate and he's literally trying to He's smiling. He 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 he. Sorry you had to see that, but it is what it is. You think, oh, Jesus doesn't know they do that? When I came home, I literally had to jump over a bush to come in. Why? Because the car was parked there. Whose car is that? If I take something and I puncture the tires and I felt like doing it. Because it was outside. They waited till I came inside. Kept till I went out to do it. That's when they think you're a pushover. But I'll deal with him good tomorrow. No, not tomorrow, the next day. I don't like to argue or quarrel, but you see when, you see when up there doesn't have much sense? Up there is empty. So what their parents didn't put in and install, apparently everybody around, I have to do that too. Everybody around. And you see how they started the car and they interrupted? Didn't like that either. Because that was the whole point of him fencing around and gating and doing whatever that he did so that I would be comfortable and safe because I'm the one living here. So don't mind me with this because I'm seriously done with all this nonsense that they've been doing. Done. Whoa. Give me the character of God. Yes, so I'll get the patience. If I only ask for patience, you know what I'm going to get. Suffering produces patience. Patience produces character. Character produces hope. Give me the character of God so patience will come without the suffering. I just kind of cut my, cut my. You know, if Java passed by, he would never do that. Java would probably tell him off. Which I'm glad he didn't pass by. He has a very little, very tiny patience. Ignorance. You know what you call ignorance? That's ignorance. All right. I think that's about it for me. I just. Trying not to get let let it get to me, but it did get to me. The arrogance of it.
quick. That was eating in the super. Excitement, excitement. Never a dull moment in Barbados. And unless you will, unless you a pushover or you oh quiet about people, then things go peacefully. And I know, no. I have such a song, I remember asking him just now if his work was crazy. I was like, he's kind of mental in the head or something. I feel he's kind of mental. I don't know. He's been acting like it. Maybe he just wants to agitate me. It's working. Once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times. You're asking for it. And when I, when I put away the little lamb, the little quiet carry, and I come out like the lion. Oh boy. Well, anyway, sorry I had to see that. But it was right there. I'm just gonna go. I'll see you guys maybe um, in the morning. But then I guess from there, I just have to get ready and go because that thing starts like 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock or something. I don't, I don't even want to go. It's a woman conference, but they want me to go, but I don't want to go, because I'm exhausted. The, the later it gets in time, the more demonic it's getting in the atmosphere. The more demonic it's getting in the atmosphere and People who are not, not in Christ, people who are not in God, they don't care about the things of God. They are, um, they're affected. And when they're affected, they're pulling. They're pulling to hold on. It's like somebody's sinking and they're pulling you down. Or they're trying to say, I don't want to go down, I don't want to go down. Well, get into Christ. Just get into him. Make life easier for everybody it's not that hard is it i don't know who's that but anyway he wants all the attention um like i was saying after judgment seat of christ I was going to reveal exactly what was in that guy's heart. When I spoke to him once, twice, three times, how many times? Da, 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 and I keep going again and again and again and again and again. And he wasn't listening. He wasn't listening. It's not good. It's not good to provoke and to anger. Just because you're lacking peace in your own heart, don't, don't come and ruin somebody's prayer time, consecrated time, peaceful time with God, reading the Bible, having dinner, honoring God by the way he said. No, nah, don't do that. Don't do that at all, at all. No, no, no. Because then the lion's coming out. And then the lion comes out. Lion doesn't come to play. Lion comes to deal. Well, anyway, I'm going to go. And I'm going to see you guys like maybe like three or four. Maybe like four. Okay, I'm going to get up. Okay, maybe like five. Five, four, five. Whenever Oba wakes me up, okay? But I'm not going to be sleeping after that. So I need to get some. I'm gone. Shalom. Bye.